Okay, welcome to our next lesson, 4.3 on circles and area. This time we're going to look at what's called the area of a parallelogram. And in this lesson, students are going to review the basic shapes of polygons and how to calculate the area of a rectangle. And then you're going to use that to create a, you're going to create a parallelogram. And we're going to convert that parallelogram into a rectangle so you can see that a parallelogram actually is the same as a rectangle. And it's just kind of uh, squished over a little bit, and you can, you can create one from it. And it'll help you to understand what the actual formula is that we're going to be working with. And then, of course, we'll actually capture the area of a parallelogram to begin with. So what you're going to need is you're going to need um, scissors and a paper with a grid on it. So if you don't have the grid, it should look something like this here. Okay, so we're going to be taking and using this. So if you don't have one, get one. If you uh, graph paper will work, but it's got to be fairly large so that you can actually use the uh, the lines that you're going to use and cut them out and everything. Okay. Now I think in your lesson in units, um, I actually had one given to you. I had one that you could use. So before we can continue, though, we have to review some of the basic vocabulary and parts of a rectangle. Are there parts that we need? So. Um, Let's take a look at a simple triangle, square, rectangle, parallelogram, and a trapezoid. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take a couple of seconds and draw me a picture of each one of them and label them, please. So pause the recording and then draw me one of each of these. Okay, the simplest one obviously is the triangle. You should have no difficulty. It could be a right triangle, whatever you wish. And this is what a triangle is. A triangle is an enclosed space with only straight lines and there's only three of them. Uh, most commonly, we end up getting a triangle like this. You could have drawn a triangle like that. You may have drawn a obtuse triangle. You could have drawn a short, flat one. All of these are triangles that you could draw. The next one is a square. Now, a square is a rectangle that has four 90-degree angles. But the unique thing about this rectangle is that all four sides are equal. Now. The why a rectangle and a square are similar is the rectangle is always defined as having four 90 degree angles. That forces this side and this side here to be parallel and this side and this side to be parallel. But the difference between the two of them is that in a square all four sides are all equal but in a rectangle this pair right here and this pair right here they have different lengths. So this is a square which is a spare, a special type of rectangle, and this is what we normally would call a rectangle. Now, that takes care of the, the first one, the triangle, the square, the rectangle. Now, a parallelogram, the most common way people draw parallelograms is where you have something which goes like this. Now, parallelograms are called parallelograms because this here and this here are parallel lines, and this here and this here are parallel lines. Okay. Now a rectangle is also a type of a parallelogram and so is a square. But this is what we people usually visualize. There we go, parallelogram. And of course a trapezoid is kind of a weird one. It has two parallel sorry, two lines which are parallel. That's this one here and this one here. But then these two lines here can be any shape they wish. And this is what we normally refer to as a trapezoid. Okay, so there's our, relation, our sorry, review of the basic shapes that you have learned so far. Now, to go back a little bit further, way back in grade six, we talked about the area of a, of a rectangle. And we first started out by drawing rectangles on grids. And we taught you that you could take this here area and you could find it simply by counting the number of rectangular, sorry, the, the number of squares in here. So if you did, you would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. And then you found out that this area was equal to 32 square units. Now, if we knew what they were, this was a, a centimeter grid, then we would call them 32 uh, square centimeters. Now, the one thing we did after that was we sort of got you to understand that, well, this is 4, this is 8, and you know that 4 times 8 is equal to 32. So this is 4 rows of 8. 
So we get you to do a whole bunch of these questions until you realize that rather than counting these little individual squares, it was much easier just to take the 4 and the 8, the length and the width, and just multiply them. And that led us to the formula for the area of a rectangle, which was that the area is equal to the length times the width. Okay. Now, in some textbooks, they call this a base, and some, and it's this here, the height. Okay. But it depends on which textbook you look at. Now, we don't use length and width as full words. We have this shortened up to be that a is equal to l times w. That should be review for you at this point. So. Um, on the drawing grid, if we wonder what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to draw a area, sorry, a rectangle with a length of seven and the width of five, and then I want you to confirm that you know how to find the area of this rectangle both by counting and by multiplication. Okay, so what I'd like you to do first is to do that. So pause the recording and find the recording, sorry, the, the area of this rectangle by actually counting first. Okay, so you should be done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a table here and insert a table. And on my table, I'm going to make squares. And I'm going to make this 7 by 5. And you can see, here we go. Now, obviously, this is a little bit bigger than I need, so I'm going to shrink it down. Okay. And here is what we're looking at here. And you should have this on your grid. So now to count this, all you have to do is start counting. This is sorry, this is this is five, and this is by seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you can keep going. And if you count them all, you would have noticed that there are 35 squares. That means that we have 35 square units here. Okay. So now that you know how to get it by counting. How do we do multiplying? Well, we do it by multiplying the length by the width. All right. So the length in this case is usually the longest side. The width is the one which is less. So our length is 7, our width is 5, and you should have got 35 square units. If I was marking this question, formula, substitution, answer. If I ask you to draw the grid, uh, you'd have to draw the grid that I've shown you right there. Okay, now let's move on to the area of a parallelogram. Now, we told you that the parallelogram has basically got a two sides, one side right here and one side right there. They're parallel. And then another side here and another side here, which are parallel. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is on the grid that I just gave you, this one right here that you've got, I want you to draw a parallelogram. Okay, so you're going to need your scissors. So here's my parallelogram. I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to go over here. And then I'm going to grab this line here and this line here. So I want you to draw a parallelogram like that. Okay, now, once you've got that drawn, next step I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take and cut right there. So that this triangle right there is cut out. Keep the rest of it, but cut that out. Okay. Now, once you have that cut out, what I'd like you to do is move it over to here. And you should have noticed something. This is what you have left right here. I'll grab this. I'll grab, I'll put it in blue. This is what you have left. A line here, a line here. This is the paper that you have left over. And this here is the triangle that you moved. Now take a look at the shape that you have there. I have neither added nor taken anything away from it. What I have now, though, is I have a distance from here to here, which is mine, one, two, three. I have a distance from there to there, which is one, two, three, four. So the area of this rectangle is four times three. That's equal to 12. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter 
whether this triangle is here or whether it's over here, if it's attached, it's still 12. So what you can tell from this is that a parallelogram, if you notice right here, look at this, this is still from here to here, it's 4 still, isn't it? So this base part right here is 4. The height right there is still 3. So the 3 and the 4 don't change. It doesn't matter whether the triangle is here or whether it's over here. I haven't added anything to it. So the area is identical. So when I look at this and I want to find the area of a parallelogram, what I need to do is I need to find out what this base is here, from here to here. And I need to know how tall it is, right here. And I have my base and my height. And I just have to multiply them. So going back to your notes for a second. Okay. You can see that I took the pair of scissors and we cut out this section right there. And we glued it, taped it, attached it to right here. And that's on the second piece of paper here. Okay. You see my instructions. I just did that. So now what we have is a rectangle. We still has a base. We still has a height. So we know that you can count the squares in this one. In this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's 28 of them here. Okay. Or, what you can do is you can calculate it. The base is 7, the height is 4, and 7 times 4 is 28. So rather than trying to cut out triangles and move them, all we need to know is what is the base, what is the height, and take those two pieces of information and put them in our formula for the area of a parallelogram. So turn the page. So. What is the area of this parallelogram? I'll give you a moment to try this, okay? I've given you two, or sorry, giving you two lines here to help you out, okay? I've given you this here, I've given you this here. So pause the recording and see if you can figure this one out. All right, so what you should have noticed is I still have a base and I have a height, okay? The base is 42, there's my base. My height is right there, that's 21. So to find the area, I'm going to take the base, which is 42, and the height, which is 21, and I'm going to multiply them just like it says right there, base times height. So when I take base times height, 42 times 21, that is 882. So, right, that is, it means that the area of this particular parallelogram right here, it's 882 centimeters squared, okay? Now, don't confuse. This is not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 squares. It's actually 42. It's just drawn on the grid to help you. All right, let's take the grid out and have you do a question. Now, I'm going to give you a sketch of this just to help you, but then I want you to figure that out for yourself. I have a height and I have a base. So I'm just going to draw a parallelogram, just a sketch. It doesn't have to be to scale. I know that my base is 23.2 millimeters. I know my height is 12.4 millimeters. Okay, I'd like you to pause the recording and complete this question. Okay, so we have areas equal to base times height. My base is 23.2. My height is 12.4. So you grab your calculator and you go 20, for 23.2 times 12.4, and you get 287.68. 287.68. And we are working in millimeters. So my, my original was millimeters. That means that I have a unit, which is millimeters squared. All right. Now, if you're ever confused on what the little floating number is supposed to be, this floating number represents the time the number of times you multiplied millimeters by itself. So this was 232 mill 23.2 milliliters, 22.2 millimeters, and 12.4 millimeters. There are two of them multiplied. That means this is a two. Later on, we're going to get to volume, which has three of them. And uh, you can probably guess that that will then be measured as millimeters with a little three. Okay. All right, sometimes we have to go backwards. Okay, now, 
In this case, I've changed the formula around. Normally, it was area is equal to base times height. Notice that there's no multiplication sign in there anymore because we don't want x to be confused as a third variable. Okay? Otherwise, you can have the base is equal to the area divided by the height, or you can have the height is equal to the area divided by the base. These are the three formula uh, variations that you can encounter, and I will be giving you them. So, a parallelogram has an area of 24 centimeters squared and has a base of 6 centimeters. What is its height? So, you have to pick the right formula, and we're trying to find height, so there's the one that we have to choose. H is equal to A over B. The height is the result of area divided by the base. Go back to the question, and I want you to try to solve this question. So, uh, I will actually pause, sorry, pause the, the video and do this question and come back in a second when you're done. Okay, so we had to put in area over base. The area was 24. It says right here the area is 24. And that's over the base. And the base is right there, 6 centimeters. So that's over 6. And of course, 24 divided by 6 is 4. So that means that in this case, the height is 4 centimeters. All right, now I'd like you to try this one right here. If a parallelogram has an area of 30 centimeters squared and a height of 5, what is its base? I'd like you to solve that question. So pause the, record, pause the, the recording and do that. Okay. Base is going to be the result of the area divided by the height. I'm trying to find the base. I get that from the question. It says, what is the base? So that's my unknown. I'm given the area right here, 30 centimeters. I'm given the height. 5 centimeters. So I put my 30 centimeters squared right here, and I put my 5 underneath it. 30 is the area, and h is 5. 30 divided by 5 is 6 centimeters, so the base of this parallelogram is 6 centimeters. And every one of these questions is doing a variation of these two, so keep these notes close by, because every time you ask the question, you should be able to go back to these notes and find out exactly what you need to do. So how about the assignment? I'll see you in the next lesson.